So, my name is uh, Abubakar Muntabbeme. I'm from Cameroon, and I'm a second year PhD student in the Department of Computer Science at the University of North Texas. And my advisor is Dr. Stephanie Ludi. And I thank her for giving me the opportunity to be here today to represent our team and talk about our work. So, my research interest lies in the area of HCI, software engineering and machine learning. And concerning Blockly, I've been working with Blockly for the past uh, one year, and I enjoyed the experience so far. Okay, so before we dive into the presentation, I will we will briefly go through the outline. So we will talk about the motivation why we are making Blockly accessible. We will discuss the approach that we follow to add accessibility to Blockly, and we will have a quick demo of what we have uh, accomplished so far. From there, we will discuss the challenges and some possible feedback solutions, and we will have a brief look at our current and future work. So why are we making Blockly accessible? So first of all, we know the, the, that uh, visual programming languages are very successful in introducing novices to programming, mainly because uh, unlike text-based languages, they don't have this heavy syntax that imposes some constraint for new users. So that is why we feel if Blockly is accessible, then it will be equally useful for users of assistive uh, technology. Then we also have this desire to make uh, programming inclusive and broaden participation in computational thinking activities that involve uh, block-based programming. So uh, before uh, there was one separate version of Blockly that was designed for users of assistive technology and Having two separate uh, systems might not really encourage collaboration for students who have sight and students with visual disabilities. So we feel having one system which is accessible for everyone is a good way of promoting collaboration. So these are uh, our motivations. And now we will go through our approach. So basically, to make Blockly accessible, it simply involves uh, adding support for assistive uh, technologies because we know People with uh, visual disabilities, they rely on alternative uh, devices or alternative interaction techniques to in, uh, communicate with the computer. So if we add support for these devices to our Blockly environment, then uh, everyone will be able to use and benefit from uh, Blockly. So we also have to consider uh, the ease of manipulation of some of the blocks, ease of interaction. So we also look at how we can redesign some of the blocks so that it can be easy for those who rely on assistive technologies to interact with the system. So as we go through the presentation, we will go deeply in each of these steps. So the screen reader. So we know that the screen reader will read the content of the screen to the user. and Blockly being visual in nature relies on visual metaphors to make uh, programming easy and teach concepts to the users. But along these uh, visual blocks, we have natural language descriptions of the blocks. And if we can extract this text that describes the blocks and then send it to the screen reader buffer, then it will be able to read that as output to the user. And luckily, we have Blockly, which is uh, developed in CSS, JavaScript, and SVG, so we can follow uh, accessibility guidelines by the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative Group, known as the Accessible Rich Internet Applications. So if we follow the area guidelines, then we will easily have a uh, Blockly uh, usable by assistive technology users because accessibility in web application is not automatic, right? So you have to follow, you, you have to like design your application with accessibility from the beginning. So if we follow these guidelines and include them in our Blockly, then assistive technology users will uh, have access and easily use the application. Now, uh, how do we uh, enable keyboard support? So 
now we know that Blockly is mouse, mouse driven. So all the actions on Blockly, the interactions are through, uh, through the mouse. So, but people with visual disabilities, especially those who are, who are blind, so they use the keyboard as an alternative method of interacting with the computer. So for us to have Blockly, for Blockly to be fully accessible, we need to support, uh, to add support for the keyboard. And luckily the Blockly team have done a tremendous work and they already have the support for the keyboard interaction. So what we, looking at this, uh, this point for keyboard interaction. So we have to identify the operations that are involved in interacting with Blockly. And we have uh, two main operations, which is drag and drop and uh, navigation, right? Drag and drop, like dragging the block from the toolbox to the workspace. And then navigation, which involves like going through different blocks in maybe in a particular category on the toolbox. Now, so the problem comes here because uh, when you are doing this interaction with the keyboard, you can have different approaches. For example, drag and drop can be performed in two ways. So if you want to drag a block, a block from the workspace to the toolbox using the keyboard, for example, so you, you can first select a block in the toolbox, then you select the location on the workspace and you drop the block. Alternatively, you can select the location in the workspace, then you go to the toolbox and select the block, then you drop the block. So, so these are some of the things that we have to take into consideration when designing accessibility uh, uh, for the keyboard. And you cannot tell which one is better or which one is, is, is good. It's only through empirical studies with uh, participants and users that you can say, okay, maybe users prefer this method than this one. So these are the things that we have to consider. And also we have to be careful when selecting the keys that we use for interaction in order to avoid conflict with uh, existing applications. So in our system, we mostly use the WSD keys as the main keys for navigation. So this is because uh, the WSD keys, uh, unlike the arrow keys, the, uh, that, the arrow, uh, so we choose to use the WSD keys unlike the arrow keys because the arrow keys are already being used by the screen reader. So if we use this one, it will conflict with the screen reader applications. And WSD keys are also like easy to access on the keyboard. So that's why we choose this, uh, this key. So these are the things that you have to consider when adding a keyboard interaction to Blockly. Now, uh, another aspect is redesigning some of the blocks to ease manipulation because uh, some of the actions that can easily be performed with the mouse when you go to the alternative interaction methods than the, like the keyboard. So it might require extra efforts for the users. So we have to like redesign these blocks so that those who use the keyboard can easily build their programs. So we have these mutator blocks that we identified and mutator blocks, as we can see here uh, on the top left, uh, of the, on the top left corner of the screen, we have this diagram that shows an if block. And the if block we see, it has a mutator on it. So this mutator, when you click on the mutator, you have an additional dialog that will allow you to construct, or then, uh, to construct additional else if and else blocks. So we feel that this operation for somebody who is using Blockly through the keyboard will require extra efforts and might uh, impose some memory constraints. So that's why we redesigned these mutator blocks so that for each mutator, we have a separate block in the toolbox that the user can use. And this also helps maintain consistency because the user might have in mind that, okay, for me to construct my program, each time I need a block, I have to go to the toolbox, then get a block and then add to the workspace. So, but if we have mutators for some of the blocks and not for others, so the user has to keep track in the mind that, okay, which block has mutator, which block does not have mutator, and this can impose some memory constraint and make learning a little bit harder than we might expect. So similarly, we also have the mutator blocks for the functions. And for you to create a function with a Blockly, you have to like drag the template block to the workspace. And then if you want to add extra parameters, then you have to go through this pop-up dialog. But we also redesigned that so that our template just takes a field, which is a number, and that number will, in, oh, sorry, 
that number indicates the number of parameters that you want for your function and once you add the number of parameters then you'll get the function uh, generated for you so these are some of the considerations that we have to look into when we want to make uh, our system or blogly or any other blog based uh, environment accessible now we will go through a quick demo of what we have done so far and while uh, i will be doing the demo so i will not talk because the screen reader will be on so if i talk so you will not be able to hear the screen reader nor hear me right so, blogly okay. interface dash so google chrome let's start our demo address and search box. selection room d colon slash blockly project slash blockly slash blockly slash accessible blockly slash blockly address and search bar blockly level one lo okay loops two of eight level one logic one of eight level one If left paren, if a, if a, edit mode entered now. Top connection, if connection, do connection, bottom connection, do connection, if connection, tree view, loop, math three of eight level one, disable, dis disabled square root of left, disabled, dis left paren, number right paren, is even block, a, is even, a, is even, a edit mode entered now, tree view. Loops two of eight level one. Math three of eight level one. Number block. Zero is even. Zero is even alerts. Zero. Edit mode entered now. At one uns Blockly interface document. Ten is even. If ten ice event. Edit mode entered now. Top connection. If connection. Do connection. Tree view. Loop. T disabled text. Disabled print left paren. Print A. Print edit mode entered now. Top text connection. Tree view. Loops two of eight level one. Math three of eight level one. Text four of text block. Left quote right quote. Edit mode entered now. Edit mode entered now. Edit D. W. Blockly interface doc print left quote hello right quote if 10 ice event edit mode entered now edit mode tree view loops repeat left repeat a times comment colon graphic and comment colon edit mode entered now tree view loops repeat repeat while or and repeat while a repeat a times if 10 ice event print left quote hello if 10 ice event if 10 so, ice event if 10 ice event this is the demo of what we have accomplished so far and how you can construct your program using the keyboard and the screen reader so we will switch back to our presentation Blockly, so, note, note uh, let me turn NVDA, off the screen NVDA, reader NVDA, exit exit nvd okay okay oh. okay So now, after the demo, are there any questions or, okay. <laughs> so some of the challenges and feedback solutions that we have. So one of the first uh, challenges that we, we, we face will be, is, we face is to like avoid conflicts with existing applications and the screen reader in particular. So if you are not careful in choosing your keys, right? So when you, if you choose your keys and it, shows that it will conflict with existing applications, then you might face a lot of difficulties. Then another challenge is choosing a navigation style for the keyboard. So as I earlier mentioned, you cannot tell which one is good, which one is, is better. So it's only through empirical studies and that leads us to our next uh, challenge that we face. So getting enough participants to conduct the empirical studies. So we also had uh, problems keeping up with the keeping up with the updates from Blockly. So each time <laughs> they had to update the main repository, we had to pull the code and that created like some problems and we had to go through some 
extra work to fix our code so that it, it can work. Then some of the feedback solutions that we have, we will, like it's related to the keyboard API that they have developed. So given that we can have multiple ways of interacting with the system through the keyboard for one particular action. So if they can make the keyboard API such that you can easily implement your own custom navigation. So that way you can test different navigation styles and patterns and then uh, you'll be able to maybe tell more which one is preferred by the users during uh, the empirical studies. Then we also uh, plan like on work, adding audio cues in order to provide more feedback information to the user. Like if you can have audio cues that indicate the start and the end of blocks or audio cues that convey structural information such as a uh, nesting. Okay, then uh, now we will discuss about our current and future work, which I already referred to some of them in our previous slide. So currently we have two surveys that we have designed. Uh, one will be to better uh, understand the mental models of users when navigating the code, stru code structure with Blockly. And we also plan to explore the differences that uh, novice programmers and experienced programmers might have uh, with the system. And we have as future work to investigate the use of audio cues to provide more contextual information for the users. Um, so for more information on uh, our work, you can consult these publications as well as uh, go to our GitHub repository where you will get uh, what we have uh, implemented. Thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs>